Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about doing weathered concrete. So I've got this nice bombed out building here and uh, we're going to go ahead and make this look like concrete, uh, like old, you know, weathered outside exposed concrete. And so we're going to do all sorts of stuff to it. But what I'm going to do right now is walk you through the basics of getting the coloration down of old exposed, sort of that kind of uh, covered concrete that once it's exposed to the weather, it starts flaking and pigmenting. Um, what I've done here so far is just some very basic stuff. This has been zenithold, and then we did some dry brushing uh, of white, and then uh, just an all over Nolan wash. So basically, with a little bit of like sepia out of the airbrush here and there, just to kind of set my values. Um, You'll notice that before I did this, I have these scratches and dents and hooks and things all into it. I want this to look old and worn, not like a new wall. We've got dirt scattered inside, stuff like that. So basically we've prepped it up just using my standard how I prepare to paint something. Now, today the paints we're gonna be using are as follows, but again, none of these are magical. I happen to like them, but you can use anything close to this. Uh, so we've got a, we've got Vallejo White Gray, War Colors Ochre One, Vallejo Cement Gray, Vallejo Desert Tan, uh, Vallejo Cyanide Gray, and Mission Models Transparent Dust One, which is a, uh, a very fun, uh, very transparent. I'm going to talk about Mission Models at some point in time in an upcoming video. I want to get a few more of them and play with them more. They're really interesting paints. I will say that you... I love them, but a preview, you really have to shake the crap out of them, but they're awesome. Okay, our tools today, are, other than the base, are going to be our old friend, the sponge. I've got a little pointed cut thing here. This is just, you know, like, this was packaging material out of, like, a clam pack or something. I keep a bunch of these around. Like, whenever I get these old, like, little sponges or packs that have these, I always save them. Then we have a very old, very, very crappy brush. Like, oh my goodness, is this thing a mess? But you can see it's all short and fat. We're going to use that. And then we might use a couple of little dry brushes or stuff like that. Uh, I've got all my different colors on my palette here, ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the pointed end of this sponge, and I'm going to go into my darkest color, which is my cyanide gray. And I'm going to just start stabbing it around. Okay. And I'm going to just start. Now this first one, you notice it's pretty thick. And that's intentional. Because I want there to be some mass to this. Because this is supposed to be old weathered ground. So that paint, I want it to actually kind of show up. Like flecked, kind of sticky paint. We won't always do it like this, but in this case, that's what we're going to do. Okay. All right. Now, next up, so then we're going to kind of, I'm just have a paper towel over here and you can, you can wipe a brush or, or sorry, wipe a sponge or even wet a sponge and get all the excess out. No different. Okay. Now let's go into a little bit of our uh, desert tan. And this time, I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to just wipe the sponge along almost like I'm doing a dry brush kind of situation. And then I'm going to start putting that in there. On the edge, just drawing it out or drawing it up. The key is we want the darkest stuff in there. At this point, we're just trying to lay down a very organic uneven pattern. Okay, so you can see I'm just stabbing very randomly, bring it out, go in deeper, kind of all over the place. Okay, and then we wipe our sponge. All right, now let's go into a little bit of our uh, cement gray, which is kind of our green gray. It's a really nice color. Again, we can test that, and then same thing. Now this is more wiped.
Okay, so we're just stabbing it down here, stabbing it down, trying to get a nice uneven pattern, right? Oops, sorry, off camera there. Apologize. Okay. Okay. You can see we've got a nice slight, might be a little over bright. There we go. We've got a nice bright color transition starting to form there. See the paint's still kind of wet. Okay, now I'm gonna go into my ochre one, wipe off my sponge. I'm actually going to flip the sponge around and use this back corner because once I transition up to my white I want it to be a little lighter and I don't want it too mixed in with that other color. So now I'm just going to start really working this ochre in. Just stabbing it down, stabbing it down, stabbing it down. You'll notice like a lot of my painting techniques, I'm fairly random about it. I believe when you're doing nature, it's best to be pretty random, pretty crazy, pretty uncontrolled because that's what gives you the best, why, you know, sort of natural random pattern. Nature isn't ordered and weathering and stuff like that. It doesn't happen organically. It happens over time, slowly as this stuff flakes and chips as dirt blows against it, dust blows against it, rain comes in, you know, things gather, all sorts of stuff like that. Okay. Alrighty. There we go. Now we're getting a nice little transition there. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna wipe that off. We're gonna go into our white gray, which is a very, it's a very near white. And honestly, it's gonna look pretty white to the eye. You have to put it up next to like true white to see it's not. And then we're just gonna stipple that backwards. getting somewhere okay now you'll notice with this big old sponge there's some places on here I couldn't reach like in here right around that edge etc that's okay if you've got spaces like this if you're on a normal base or something you probably don't have that issue because this thing is so stupidly massive and has all this extra space and all this these little extra bits and bubbles there's little things where my sponge doesn't want to go easily that's no problem. Okay. Now, you might have said, but Vince, you didn't use the transparent dust at all. Well, you're quite right, I did not. So now, I'm gonna go back to my original dark side. I'm gonna take that point, get some of that transparent dust, which will live up to its name. It's a quite transparent color. And here on this middle line, we're just gonna kind of spread it around a little. Because what it's going to do is create a nice natural transition with all of this color. It's a very transparent thing. It looks like old dusty ground. It's a wonderful color, but it's very minimal. Okay. All right, so now what we've got right there is a nice transition of this sort of old concrete. What we can do is we can do a couple things. 
So first off, I could keep stippling back and forth with a sponge to add some more darker color down here. Sorry, let me stand these back up. That's bothering me. There we go. But instead, we're going to take our little stippling brush here, okay? And I'm going to go into my darkest color. And what I'm going to do is just start stippling it around. Because I want to rebuild up some of that darkness. And this is why we use an old crappy brush for this, because we are going to beat the heck out of this brush. And this, we can actually get down and back in these corners. You know, we can get down here, start mixing it around. Start laying on some little steps and strange little places where the color is stretched up. Different depths as we stipple around. We go back into our brown, our next color up. I'm wiping, I'm just using the back of my hand, but I'm just wiping it here and there. Take some of that brown, we just shove that down in there. A little bit more. Like I said, do not, do not use your nice brush for this. Please, for the love of God, don't ruin a brush doing an old dirty cement wall. It'll make me very sad if I cause somebody to ruin a brush. Go up into that cement gray, that wonderful green gray tone. You notice each time I'm not really hewing to a line. I'm pressing it back and forth. I come forward a little bit. I go back a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit. The key is to get this all very mixed together, right? We don't want it to be a pattern where it just goes like darkest, mid next, middle, mid high, high. That's not what we want, all right? We want this to feel very organic in the way that this is on here. And what it should feel like is toward the edge of this, where the water hasn't collected the most, where, because everything's streaked down. Like all of the water and everything would settle toward the end, all the dirt. If you ever looked at exposed walls, all the dirt and stuff, it runs into the corners. You know, this probably foundation started sinking, so this back corner would collect water, hence why all the stone is here, right? So it just continues the narrative we're telling when we spread it around like this. Because again, it's gonna dry and evaporate. There's gonna be detritus and mineral deposits in there. So, you know, things are gonna dry unevenly. Things are gonna dry messily. Nature is messy. And that's what we wanna replicate. The really fun part about doing stuff like this is you can't really make a mistake. It's, it's, all, just, it's all just stabbing paint around. It's a very fun way, thing to do. I highly recommend stuff like this. If you ever, you come home after a long day, you need a little stress relief, put together a cement base for a future project. This kind of stuff will, will knock the stress right out of you because you're just, ah, take that you plastic card, I'll show you, you know, whatever. It's a good time. All right. Okay. Beautiful. Now that I've sufficiently killed this poor brush even more. Okay. Now you can see what we've got is this wonderful natural looking transition, right? Of this old weathered stone, okay? Going from this bright color up here down into this dark sort of uh, natural kind of uh, I don't know, brown gray is really what I want to say, right? It just l has that wonderful look of old concrete, okay? Now, we can play with this more. I can go back into my transparent dust with my stipple brush, and I can place some of that around as well. All that really does is just kind of shift the color to be a little brighter. It's mostly transparent. That's what I like about it. Um, it's almost kind of like a pink gray, which I know sounds strange, but it's actually a very useful color in nature. Um, it just tends to sort of feel like a lot of replicated white. 
because it has this, like white in nature tends to be absorbing the colors of things around it. And so it just has this great feeling. It also does the great job because it's transparent of when we're stippling, it almost acts like a stippling glaze where it sort of brings our disparate colors a little more together. We don't want this transition to feel sharp. We want the differences in color to be there and to be all up in each other's business, but we don't want it to feel like there's like a super bright patch directly next to something that's not and is just kind of dark in there. Because the reality is there'd be the, the scale that we're doing this at, the micro pattern would be so little, right? That it, would, it wouldn't really show at this scale. Now, if we were doing something for like a 54 or a 75 mil miniature, that would probably be different, okay? But there we go. We've got some nice concrete. Uh, so I very much like how that's looking right there. Hopefully that light isn't, or is showing up nicely. I think you can see it real well there, where you can see that nice transition. So that's our base for the concrete. If you're just looking to do the concrete, you've got a good base laid down, you're good. Now, what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna show you some more things I do to step up the realism on this, okay? Now, but I need to let all of this dry completely before I go on. So we're gonna take a quick little break, and then when I come back, I'm gonna show you some of the next steps you can do to push the realism on your old concrete even more, okay? Back in a minute. All right, we're back, and everything is nice and dry. You can see we've got our cement colors. As they dry, they'll change, and you know, a little bit, everything will kind of set in. You can see we've got this nice patterning going uh, that looks really like this organic weathered cement. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some things we can do to push it even farther. Because what we've got here is some good weathered concrete, but we can go, we can go much farther. So first off, we can take a little of our friends, Seraphim Sepia and Agrax Earthshade, make sure those inks have a good shake there. Or shades, I should say. They're not inks, they're shades. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop these bad boys open. Okay. Be very careful, we're not gonna, we're not gonna spill them. Uh, and I'm gonna use my crappy brush and I'm gonna get a little bit of that out on my palette. So I'm just bringing out some of the shade here on my palette. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just touch my water and water it down just a little bit. So this is the Seraphim Sepia first. Now what I wanna do here is capture some weather staining. Okay, so with my crappy stipple brush, what I'm gonna do is just lightly, lightly stipple this around. Okay, focus toward the bottom maybe around like the pipe, just spread it out, okay? So what we're doing is just giving this nice little filter tint to it. Again, still the same technique. We're still just stippling it around, spreading it out. It's watered and thinned down. You notice it's a very minimal effect. We don't want it very strong. Okay, I want to kind of just draw it out into the room and up the wall. Varied heights, we're not going for one verticality on it, right? We want it to be a little varied in how it looks. So what we get now is this nice little extra tone, okay? Then we're going to take our Agrax. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do it a little bit differently. Agrax is a wonderful color because it has this black knit to it, sort of a very dark black brown. Once again, we're gonna to touch into our water, thin it out. Now, this time I'm gonna focus more toward the back near this debris. And eventually I'm gonna, this will all be painted, all this rock will be painted separately. I'm doing this first because I don't want, uh, because I wanna make sure that I can just go kind of nuts here. And this will be it. This will be the same color here as the earth around when we get there. But I'm going to focus this more toward the edge 
toward the lower part. We're going to use this to really darken down this line. We're going to shove some of this here in the corner as well. Maybe a little more. We want to get this back corner like really nice and black brown, like like you know this crud is just collecting back here whatever this is right runs it gets down in that corner gets all gross and nasty if we get too thick we don't like it or the line gets too strong we just very quickly wipe our brush and then go push it around some just thin it out this stuff will stay wet and usable long enough that when we're stippling like this quickly, we can draw it out, we can play with it, we can push it around, we can make it feel very natural and organic. Again, that's the key. Nice random pattern. Okay, if we wanna go all the way, we can even take some of our Nuln Oil. If we want to get some really deep shadows. And repeat the same process again. So let's get a little of that Nuln Oil out here. So now we're just into like, you know, Nuln Oil does have some brown in it. Um, it's not a pure black shade. It does have a, uh, a bit of a brown to it. So again, we're gonna focus this and push this more up into the rocks, uh, just so because we want this to be very minimal. We'll just do like the down corner here. Sorry, I know I keep turning. The angle my hand has to reach. You notice I'm just putting these all on top of each other. They're still wet. I want them all mixed up, all getting in each other's business. Then I'm gonna avoid my brush completely. Let me just, I'm just wiping it off on the paper towel, that's all I mean. And then I'm just gonna just with nothing but a wet brush stipple on the edges here just kind of soften these edges a little okay now what i'm going to do then is go back to my transparent dust from mission models remember again a very transparent color I'm gonna get my brush wet this time because I want this to, which is already quite transparent, to be a little thin. And then on the edge, we're gonna go in and just stipple some of this around. Just get it mixed in with that shade. Same thing here on the wall. It'll look real bright when it first goes on, like you can see Maybe that that looks a little strong, don't worry. When it dries, it dries very clear, very transparent. We're not looking to cover up our work. We're again, just stippling into it, just trying to look at, make it look more mixed up, more natural. As we do this, because it's still wet, it's gonna start mixing with the paint, right? Like the transparent dust is gonna start mixing with some of that shade and get all in there. And then we'll get little half transitions. This is effectively stippling wet blending, right? Okay. There we go. So now what we've got, you can see the difference between that and where we were before. Now we can really see like our watermarks, our stains, where this griminess has built up over time and started really sticking here in these lower parts, okay? So now I think that's starting to look real good. But of course, we can go even farther. So again, you can, as per always, you can jump off this train whenever you want. Like if you get to a place like this and you're like, hey, that looks good, I like where I'm at, awesome, stop here. But we're gonna go a little farther and we're gonna see what we can do next. But we gotta let everything dry first, so back in a moment.
All right, we're back. So you can see everything's dry. We got our wall. Looks all nice and weathered. But there's some last steps we can do. Oh, there's a lot of other steps we can do. Not all of which I'm going to do on camera today just because of timing. But we'll talk that through. So the last thing we can do is we have all these nice cuts and scrapes and dots in the wall and stuff. And we can go in and some of those are still picked out from our initial wash. And we didn't get more paint in there because of the... Uh, because of the way we stippled and stuff like that. So we didn't really force a lot of paint down in there. However, we can reinforce those. So what we're gonna do here is on our wet palette, I'm gonna get some very thin black, okay? Mix with it a little thin brown. So we got kind of a darker but dirty mix. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is just reinforce, oops, sorry, is just reinforce these little lines. Okay, so I wanna just take a few of them, basically just paint them in. So I'd continue to fill out each one of those. You can see I've got a whole bunch of them here on the actual, uh, on the wall. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take some of my white gray, which was my highlight color, you'll remember, from the wall itself. Get a nice, thin, flowing version of that. And then very carefully, under each line, so like right here, where we have this line, we're going to go ahead and just draw a little, we're going to kind of, again, not draw a straight line, but just kind of stipple it down just light touches, just dots, just like that, to make sure that it's called out. And what that gives us, we can do it again here. We wanna do it on the underside of every line where the light would catch. We grab under the dots, under each little hole. And what that does is that calls out those marks. You can see, like right here, look how much more that stands out, just because we have that little white, it's a white gray speck underneath it. And that's the same highlight color as our wall itself. From here, where we'll go is to a couple different things. Obviously the places you can go are, I'll paint the rest of the base. Once that's all done, I can varnish it and then I'm gonna use some oil paints to create some rust streaks down from the, um, from these like iron bars that are up out of the wall, probably something leaking out of the pipe. I can have some running down here on the ground, like a little bit of rust stain around where the pipe is going down in. Um, we can use some weathering pigment. We can force some different pigments around, put some more dirt on things, stuff like that. So we can go more and weather it more, but that's, oops, sorry. That's more about the weathering step. And kind of the final thing, once everything's painted, varnish, we seal it in. Then we can lay down some oils, let that dry, varnish that in. We can lay down some pigments, let that, and then varnish that. So there you go. That's how to do weathered concrete. I'm just gonna continue on calling out all my little scratches and hashes and underlining them. That way they, uh, they get caught and look very strong. And then uh, we'll go from there. But I certainly hope you enjoyed this. Uh, give it a like if you did. Uh, I love making big weathered bases and stuff like this. I think it's a lot of fun. And hopefully you found this interesting and want to make some bases of your own, whether on a giant thing like this or even on your small individual characters. Doing these kind of concrete ruins can be a great set or great item to spice up a base in the 41st millennium or any other sort of ruin sci-fi or apocalyptic or, or game like that. Uh, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share this with somebody if they're looking to do something like this. Sharing is always uh, the most appreciated thing you can do. And as always, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.